If you don't know who King Sid is, he's a content creator based out of Florida who uploads creative videos like Smash or Pass Face to Face, Find Your Match, and his infamous last two videos. This content features many of his friends and fellow creators, fan favorites, and Sid's audience. But recently, these same friends have supposedly exposed the true nature of King Sid that most of his viewers probably don't see. Join my Discord if you want to help with future videos and continue this discussion. The link is in the description. But let's get into it. King Sid, aka Jason, had a group called Steez with all of his fellow creators and friends, with Nate So Ugly being one of them. There are many reasons as to why Nate doesn't mess with Sid anymore, and moving into the Steez house marked the beginning of the end. Nate uploaded a video titled Dear King Sid you're done. Getting everything off his chest with a picture of Sid in a dress, causing everyone to refer to him as Queen Sid. Some of these comments come from King Sid's beef with another YouTuber from Florida by the name of Miami the Kid, but I'll get into that another time. So Nate starts his video by saying he feels like Sid tried to act like a father figure to him, yelled at him and told him to get off the phone. Sounds familiar, right? And even though he was paying $1,200 in rent, he was subject to unreasonable rules. I move in, I pay 15 to move in, right? This was the first issue I had with this nigga. I was on the phone downstairs with a girl. It's 2 p.m. people. Everybody else is still asleep. It's 2 p.m. right? It's 2 p.m. He sees me on the phone. I see him see me on the phone. I'm talking to the girl still on the phone out of nowhere. Five minutes later, this nigga starts yelling at me, telling me to get off the phone. Oh, why the f you on the phone? What if I came downstairs and started talking, this and that? Get the fuck off the phone. You always on the phone. You always on the phone with a different bitch every day. Get the f off the phone. What the f my nigga, this nigga is telling me to get off the phone to a house I'm paying 1200 a month. Shortly after, Sid came to him and apologized, and the situation was ended after that. Nate also talks about another situation during a video shoot where Sid defends a girl named Kenzie that he initially talked down on, who actually ended up confirming everything about her and Sid on IG. I literally said the same thing when I told everybody. I said, yo, he don't want nobody behind him when he does the magic trick. This girl starts being like, oh my god, leave me alone, why are you bothering me, why are you coming to me and telling me I'm not going to listen to what you do, like, starts being a spoiled brat out of nowhere, bro, bro, start causing a whole scene, then this nigga said, Mr. Captain save a want to save this girl, like, oh, why you bother her, this and that, leave her alone, this and that, get away from her, you don't even like her, you don't listen that, you said all types of things about her, I'm like, bro, what? Fam, you just met the bitch like two weeks ago. Now you all like, you feel me? You just came to me. Imagine you just came to me about the bitch, right? You told me about the bitch saying all this type of stuff about the bitch. You was about to kick the bitch outside your house. Now all of a sudden you defending the bitch. That was the issue I started to have with him. He's defending this girl after talking so much behind her back about towards me finding all this shit about this girl right how she's ran through how she does serious drugs how she been with this and that much people yet you're protecting this girl right after when the video started that's when the nigga said started talking like oh you doing all this and that he had to do that this and that this and that you want to be a cry baby this and that so I, I started snapping that nigga i said listen bro you bringing this into this house that we paying bills for you just met the you want to be captain saver you talk you just we just got done talking shit about the we just got done talking the shit about the now you protecting the bitch. Now you wanna be all, all like, oh, you wanna be Captain Saber. Da, da, da. Man, f you and f the bitch too. I literally said that to their face. This is my most favorite part about this video, bro. Cause after everything that went down, the girl and Sid ends up breaking up and she gets on Instagram and exposes the man for what, ladies and gentlemen? Abusing and mistreating her. Nate felt some type of way for how Sid moved in that situation and he damn near didn't participate in the video. That same day, Nate went off on both Sid and Kenzie after filming the video, and he and Sid didn't speak for a while. Sid came to apologize to him again, and they squashed that one too. Another situation that Nate also details is a boat trip where a confrontation between Sid and the girl Nate invited led to physical aggression from Sid. Nate didn't like how Sid acted in that situation, and he was very angry about Sid's lack of accountability for his actions. Fast forward, everybody vibing, chilling on the boat, whatever, this and that. The captain comes and get me and tells me, yo, your boy's tripping. At first, I don't even know what he's talking about, bro. So I said, okay, uh, point me to where is that? Okay, I'm walking over. The captain brings me to where the situation has happened, saying my boy's tripping. It was Sid, the girl, and the girl that I invited. They were all arguing. 
So I was trying to kind of confuse of what was going on. So I was trying to peep game was go what was going on. The man said, prior to when I'm trying to listen to the argument and see like what the fuck is going on, the man said lunges his hand towards the girl neck that I invited. He lunges his hand towards the girl neck. Bro, I kid you not, I started spazzing, kid. Cause you're lunging your hand towards a girl that I invited. You putting your hands on a girl on top of that, fam? For me to witness this shit right in front of me in my in face fam no i was heated fam i was heated then a nigga said came to my room after the boat situation the man literally came to me and told me listen bro the reason why i did what i did is because oh i felt like she was following from the last boat i felt like she was following me she was doing too much everywhere i go she go this and that so if if that, if that situation were to happen i would even mind spitting on the girl fam let me just stop y'all right there it's the fact that you knew what you did and you're saying that you would do it again due to the fact that you felt like this girl was following you this and that on type all types of shit. In a strange turn of events, Sid said that everybody had to move out the house. And this was shortly after Nate had paid the rent for the month, leaving Nate feeling manipulated and financially impacted. After Nate confronted Sid about this, he told Nate that he didn't owe him any money. So prior to when I'm not talking this and that, I'm just vibing like I'm barely, I'm in and out the house. Barely even sleeping there, whatever, voiding these niggas, stop talking to these niggas. Remind you, I'm still paying rent, bro. So that's when the month of May came in, bro. I'm talking about we're two weeks in, I already paid my 1200 bro. I paid my 1200 I'm barely there, you feel me? Most, all my stuff is there, but I'm paying, you feel me? The middle of the month, the man puts me in a group chat, right? And basically it was like, by the, towards the end of this, the month that I just recently paid for, May, Towards the end of this month, everybody have to move out. I just broke the lease. Everybody get out, do what you gotta do. Go find your own place to stay, this and that. I canceled the lease, fam. So when he did that, I kinda told bro, I said, listen bro, owe me money then. Cause I'm not finna pay for a month, I have to move out. Imagine you pay rent, then you have to move out. Who in the fuck pays rent to move out? The man said, I lost money too part of this. So, uh, you not getting your money back. What, I don't owe you shit. Everything that followed this seemed like it was long overdue. While the two were arguing through text, Sid drops his location and Nate pulls up to fight him. With another Steez member by the name of Jay Wonder, who was basically Sid's version of a YB fan, jumping in to protect his savior, King Sid. So bro, I started snapping on bro through text. And then prior to when we were arguing, the nigga talking about something he made me, bro. So I'm like, bro, who the f you made? Now you got me really fed up. The man dropped this Addy. He was at my barber. I pulled up quick. I pulled up with my boy. I went over there. Long story short, we just ended up fighting, bro. Prior to when we were fight, I basically got jumped because I literally pinned this nigga down and then this nigga Wonder came out of nowhere and started hitting me in the head, bro. Like trying to knock me off this nigga, bro. Remind you, all I did was pin the nigga sit down. This is a me and Sid argument. This nigga wonder come out of nowhere talking about some get off the of Sid. Later on, Nate spoke to Jeff, another member of C's, and Jeff told him and Sid to run the fade with no interference. While trying to set this up at a gas station, Sid would actually spit in Jeff's face. In Nate So Ugly's next video, he explains what led to the downfall of the Steez group from Sid stealing slash controlling every aspect of the group from passwords, money, etc. Call of Kid allowing Sid to degrade him and disrespect his girlfriend, and removing the original members of Steez from the channel banner. This nigga Sid decided to take this this saying and make it into a group, right? Gather all us niggas around. All that Steez is under his name, Sid's name. Fam, the man took Call It Kid saying and turned it to his brand. The whole Steez is under Sid. Whatever money we made, it went straight to his pocket. All that YouTube shit is straight to him. The, the account, he knows the password. Only he knows the password, this and that. He literally told Call It Kid anything Steez that he made take it off because he felt like call the kid was ruining the brand like this man call the kid had a youtube channel called the steez channel the man said literally called this man call the kid and said yo take that shit down you're ruining the brand and you look at the banner it's not even none of us that's there this nigga even changed the banner and put another nigga there that never was even part of it i'm talking about you pete he put a nigga named pete so ugly i'm nate so ugly you're basically trying to replace me for another nigga that's inspired by me. Nate exposing Sid was probably the best thing to happen for everyone opposing Sid in the situation, causing folks to come out the woodworks to talk about their experience with King Sid. The crazy part about all this is that I actually believe almost every single one of them.
The first one of these was Call of Kid, who are reacting to Nate's videos, share some thoughts of his own. Oh, uh, that's when Jeff and Suave came in my room and just like, Nate, just do the video, f all that bullshit, just knock out the video and this and that, you feel me? Yeah, I so remember, I remember. When we was doing that video, the magic video, I put up bread for that video, you feel me? But it was like, it got, it got too toxic. It basically got too toxic. He turned the brand, another nigga name into a brand and put it under his name, everything. All that YouTube shit straight to him. The uh, account, he knows the password, only he knows. Facts, that's facts though. He literally told Kala Kid anything Steve that he made, take it off because he felt like Kala Kid was ruining the brand. Facts, I ain't gonna ask facts though. I'm gonna keep it real as I possible, I live by bro. myself. That's real, that's fucking real, bro. Soon after, Jeff, aka Lil Jeff, gave his own account of how things went down with Sid and the Steez group, which of course supports what Nate was saying on top of some new information. I'll let you guys hear. I showed all this love and I ain't getting nothing in return. All I got was a spit in my face. You fucking try to ruin my relationship. Posted by me on Twitter, walkie talkie this, walkie talkie that. Like, bro, you were just, you was been sending slick shots. You was been moving crazy. Phil, just think about it. A fucking grown ass man, which you think is your friend, getting mad at niggas on the phone. You telling people, oh, they can't invite people, this and that. So it's just like, bro, what? Diamond said you put your hands on her. Kenzie, Bree, all these girls saying you put your hands on them. Now I gotta sit back and ask myself, who's the problem? Cause every saying the same shit, all your old dogs that you used to fuck with, that you used to treat bad saying the same shit. The circle shit, this nigga giving nigga $200, $500. I mean, last year I won a challenge, you gave me like 2,000, but you saying on camera you gonna get 10,000, and you posting, you make you posting, you making 100K a month. Like I said, y'all, I'm not pocket watching, I ain't doing none of that. But this the, he's the type of nigga to flex on us. He said, oh, niggas mad because they can't spend 150, and then he gonna send a screenshot of his video saying, oh, we still crushing. Like, bro, you doing a fire match. Me posting your fire match is not gonna stop your views. Me, Nate, Suave, us posting it or reposting Posting it is not gonna stop you getting your 500k viewers, whoa. In a deleted response video titled My Side of the Story, King Sid tries to counter all the points that everyone was saying, starting with the situation with Kenzie. He basically said that the Steez group were the ones that was talking down on her and not Sid himself, which is what Nate said. Now look, I just broke up with my ex. I am a lover boy fam, okay? Listen, well, it hit me hard, okay? Now she over here, this and that. I ain't wanna go back and talk to her. So what I'm gonna do is talk to a new girl. Started talking to her, not really talking to her like, oh my God, I'm a wife for you. Talking to her as in like, we vibing. Like, okay, you making me forget about my ex. End up vibing for a long time, and then boys, like she never went home from the day, that the, that night she came from the trooper there. So, we end up vibing, then boys started seeing her over and over at the crib, like without leaving, they go and try to tell me some stuff about her for me to get mad and like, try to like, make her leave. They was telling me she was with Spotty Gotham like two weeks with, Two weeks before she was at the crib, they wanted me to stop talking to her. Now I'm like, bro, I ain't gonna lie. She ain't just leave my house and go talk to bruh. That's what she did two weeks before me, bro. At the end of the day, fam, nigga not trying to think of my ex, no, none of that. Right now, I'm just trying to get in a new mode and just, you feel me? I ain't give a fuck. I still, you know, still kept her around. He then talks about the altercation on the yacht, saying that he never put his hands on any woman that night and was annoyed that they kept knocking on the door. So... I'm downstairs with Kenzie, but this time I'm in there for a long motherfucking time. I swear to God, the same thing happens again from the from two days ago. I hear knocking and knocking and knocking, and I hear a lot of shit, bro. So I get out and I'm mad now, bro. And I say, bro, what the fuck, bro? And I see it's the same girls, bro. But this time it was the black girl that was leading them. The the the, the other the third home bro. She wasn't there the first time. She came to she came the uh second time. She comes, bro. And she's like leading the way. And I, I swear to God on my life, I did not hit this girl. I put my hand out and I say, why y'all keep fucking playing, bruh? I'm tired of y'all fucking playing. And the thing is, they was trying to get in, 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 in the girl. I was talking Kenzie's head because, you know, you feel me? I used to talk to Artika. Now, you know, girls, girls, girls be messy, bruh. I'm mad. My hands in their face. Stop playing. And plus, I, if you, look, I'm overprotected type of person. If you would try to mess with anybody I'm with, a girl I'm with, I'm not gonna let that slide. You got you, you got to do it to me too then. You feel me? So I'm with her, what? I, you can call me Captain Save a hole you can call me Superman for anything you want. Nate come out of nowhere, whoa. Mad as fuck. And, and I think he did that because the, the black girl that, he, that, that was there, that's the girl he was talking to, whoa. So Nate come out of nowhere, <sighs> puffing and puffing. <sighs> I'm tired of y'all always dick riding this man. Y'all always picking this man's side. Y'all always everything. Y'all never seen no wrong in what he do. He just hit her. Y'all always defending this man. He just talking crazy without knowing what happened, whoa. So you know what I do? 
I say back, fam. I told Nate, I ain't gonna lie. We all lived in the same house at the time. I said, I ain't gonna lie, Nate. You gotta get the fuck up out of this crib, bro. I ain't gonna lie. And I said that because I was leaving too. I didn't just say that for me to stay in the crib and, and this and that. Look, we fell out over that situation right there. Don't act like I've been a flawless friend the whole entire time, this and that. If, if, if it comes to betting or picking basketball teams, this and that, Nate always trying to pick the opposite side. And that's fine. You could do that on personal things. But when it comes to these situations where it's serious, well, where you don't know what happened, don't come dive in without knowing what happened, fam. It's like you trying to make me look bad and you don't even know they came to me. They came forcing shit on me. After this, he proceeds to try and low bro Nate, saying that he made him and shits on his nine to five job that he had before YouTube. And then everybody's saying, oh, Oh, Nate, Nate was there for you the whole time, this and that? Yes, Nate was there for me the whole time. I said that before. Nate helped me so much. Even when we was at the Steve's crib, Nate, every, Nate edited every single vlog. I'll never take that away from him. I paid him for the vlogs, all right? On top of that, fam, Nate came back to YouTube because of me. And I never told y'all that. I never said anything about that. I never rubbed my hands on it, whoa. I told him that probably after he acted like a whole ass nigga. I said, bruh, you gonna do this to me after everything I did for you, fam? You was working at a call center, whoa. Your YouTube for six months, it says zero dot zero with some cents. You didn't make over a dollar on YouTube. So what did I do, bruh? I put my hand out for you. I was like, bruh, fam, you can't be working at a call center, bruh. You gotta be in some type of area with YouTube. You gotta come back to YouTube, bruh. Ain't gonna lie, this is not what you supposed to I swear to God on my life, bro. On my grandma that's dead, on my mama, on my daddy, I swear to God I'm telling y'all the truth right now. And I felt bad from the bottom of my heart, whoa. This man was not even on YouTube. And it's crazy, whoa, that this man wasn't on YouTube. YouTube, he stopped, he quit doing YouTube while I kept going and now he's trying to take my YouTube channel away from me. Hell no, look, well, so what did I do? I let him use my brand new camera. I let him use my net brand new camera. I let him use my brand new idea, find your match. I set up the studio and the people for him. And let me tell you what happened, whoa. The, the Cardi, my thumbnail designer, I said, yo, make the thumbnail exactly alike, whoa. I, I, shared, I shared the video on my community. I shared it on my vlogging community. I made everybody share it, whoa. The video went fucking viral, whoa. The, that same month from making zero, zero every single month, Nate made $5,000 that month. Tell him show you the revenue. Sh tell him show you the revenue so you can see I'm not lying to you. His channel going up, he, he, he's finding himself. He's finding himself again. Now the same way you helped me when I first started, I helped you come back into YouTube. So don't act like we didn't help each other, fam. I just didn't sit there telling everybody that you that, that I did that for you. So with that situation, bro, it's like all of that shit started getting to his head. Then you picking like people other side without even seeing me through. I'm like, nah, hell nah, bro. Sid then speaks on the Steez channel, giving a counter to all of Nate's points. When we leave in the um, Steez crib and stuff, when I told him they gotta get out, cause I moved too from there. I was not gonna live in that place. I was not happy with them boys. I didn't wanna be part of that where everybody has animosity towards me. That's why I moved out. That's why I kept doing my own thing. Like, it's not like I stayed in that house. It's not like I try to profit from the brand. I don't post nothing on that page. I never posted nothing with nobody else after they left, you feel me? So if I was trying to profit, I was not trying to profit. There was nothing to profit from there. We just got monetized. We probably made like what? 1,500? We just got monetized. Come on now. I, there's nothing to profit from. And lastly, he talks about the situation when Nate got jumped and even admitted to jumping him. Nate ends up texting me, oh, you saying you made me? You gotta show me you made me. This and that. He's just talking crazy to me. So send end up sending my current location to his ass. He kept talking crazy, and I said I'm not gonna fight you. Now mind you, we was going to Tampa the next day, and I was just getting a haircut. I got a haircut, and I get a black tape and everything. So you feel I'm not? I told him I'm not gonna fight. I'm not trying to fuck up my little black tape and shit. Ends up still pulling up. Come in, he say, uh, you say you made me. He's like, he's not fully crying, but he's like huffing and puffing. I swear to God, I put this on my life, bro. <laughs> you say you made me what the show me you made me. Now I'm squared up with him walking around like this. Bruh, I'm telling you, I'm not gonna fight you. I said I'm not gonna fight you. I'm, I'm with J1 and Money T and EJ. Now it's EJ and Nate by themselves. There, it's not nobody else. Money team and EJ, they start fighting. So after that, Nate comes like closer to me and I punch him in the shit. Punch him in the shit, I promise, bro. So then he's still walking towards me. It's a big guy, you feel me? Still walking towards me. Bop, bop, hit him again, hit him again, right? Now Swear he comes with his head down, fam. He comes with his head down and he, he, the big nigga, listen, he cut on top of me and he, uh, I'm on the floor this way now. I'll show you real quick. He's on top of me just like this. Now he's not hitting me or nothing. He's not throwing no punches or nothing. His fucking head is just on me. He's just laying his heavy ass body on me. He laying his heavy ass body on me. He not getting up. Hell yeah, oh, we don't fuck with you. Wonder came behind him. Bah! 
Bah! Hit him in his fucking head. Now I see why he deleted this video. <laughs> they so ugly wasted zero time responding to Sid in a third video of his own, completely going off on him. I seen this shit, fam. Facts. But let's just say you never put your hands on this girl. Maybe I was exaggerating. You would put your hands on a girl pointing at her. Okay, cool. But my nigga, the girl that you are with, when you guys broke up, she literally exposed you for putting your hands on her, fam. And the other thing when I made the post of Jason like choking me and doing all that, that was because there was multiple occasions of him like putting his hands on me or whatever. Um, for example, one time, we went jet skiing and I cut my foot and I fell off the jet ski so he dropped me back off the, on the island and I was like crying, whatever. And so the jet ski people came up and were giving me like napkins and stuff to clean myself up with as I'm crying. And he comes up and he's like, why are you being friendly? Da, 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 da. And it turned into like a whole situation. So then we get back to the car, we're still arguing. He gets really mad and punches the front window shield and the whole thing shatters, like, as Jay Wonder is driving back to the house. Then we get back to the house, I get out the car, we're still arguing, because he's still thinking I was friendly. When I was, I was literally just crying. And then, eventually, he gets me on the ground and starts choking me, like, on the ground, and I'm screaming, I couldn't get up. Jay Wonder eventually hears and comes out and literally gets, like, Jason off of me. And we bring the fight, like, upstairs. And then we start like actually fighting and I have bruises all over my body. Like I have blood everywhere. Like the next day, the whole room was trashed. It was horrible. I don't know. I ended up not forgetting about it, but like we just acted like nothing like ever happened, you know? But that was one of the examples. There's multiple others, but. So let's do a pop quiz, ladies and gentlemen. Is it A, did you put your hands on the girl that I invited? Is it B, did you put your hands on the girl that you were with, which is Kenzie? Or is it C, all of the fucking above? Oh, fam either way you're putting your hands on fam that is the allegation why would i cap about that fam i don't play that shit fam you already had that diamond situation i'm not trying to have it again my brother i'm trying to save you but you can't even save yourself it's crazy i'm talking about these allegations when there's other allegations that you did because you a fuck nigga fuck you while everything was playing out between Sid, Nate, Call of Kid, and Jeff, this prompted others to drop videos of their own. This time being one of Sid's most recent adversaries, Miami the Kid. Let me know if you want me to explain their entire beef in another video because it's just too much to explain right now. But Miami the Kid's video was basically an I told you so cook session. I'm gonna let you hear it for yourself. I been told y'all boys straight up, he a hoe. And I heard, I heard some other things about him too. I wouldn't be surprised if he in the closet. I heard a few things. He ain't never gonna know how to get it on his own. Why? You been breastfeeding him the whole time. He don't know how to hustle, bruh. He don't know how to be his own boss. All my niggas around me got their own shit going on. I don't be trying to put niggas under me. When I don't want to speak about that studio vid we went to. When I seen your ass and I was in the building and you, you was quiet the whole time, you couldn't even make one star. God damn, how many views you got on your channel, bruh? You couldn't make one superstar, bruh? The next two to make their own videos following Sid was Smooth Geo and Sway VJ. Both who were around Sid at some point. I'm gonna let you hear their side. I am in shock, bro. Like, I am in complete shock. Like, I'm just like... Now, I had a whole bunch of, like, fans. Everybody's in my DMs. They're sending me this video from an editor that recently worked with both me and Sid. The editor goes to saying, like... Sid told the editor not to edit for me. I even gave him the benefit of the doubt. So I asked him, I said, damn fam, like that? That's flaw, bro, you know what I'm saying? And then he said, that's around the time we weren't cool. Of course I didn't want him to edit for you, you know what I'm saying? The go editor goes on to say that Sid really just wanted to get cool with me to get his views back up. And he also was telling the editor not to edit for me. He kept, mind you, when he was trying to get back cool with me, he was telling me like, yo, like, bro, when I tell you he was blowing up my phone, you guys, Sid was blowing up my phone. I'm talking about like, yo, you ever had like a stalker girlfriend or someone that was just a stalker just blew up your whole iMessage? Oh, always, like I always just felt that energy within him now. He's probably gonna say otherwise cause you know how he like to flip the script, but with me, I just feel like it was always hate. And then it got to the point where, mind you, I don't even stay there. I don't even live there. It came to the point where he was trying to say, yo, Suave slowing the group down. Now, I'm telling you, we had a whole group conversation, like two or three members out the group wasn't gonna come back to me and tell me he could have kept it man to man. 
trying to go go to geo video okay we go to geo video now it's other people there that you got a problem with we in geo video for about five ten minutes now we lined up in the smash and pass mid video you just decide to walk out on your dog geo shit on the same person that you wanted to relink with and be cool with now you walking out his videos if bro would have done that to you you probably would have went on the ground the next day ran now the last but not the least of the two responses that i'll talk about in this video are from kenzie and diamond two of king sid's exes and they basically confirm everything that you probably heard before so it was going good for a month or two and until he started getting a little bit more possessive over me or jealous by other guys but it was very emotionally draining for me like being verbally and physically like abused is not something i could handle i guess at the time and jason's literally pushing me and i finally shove him back and i'm like bro stop he literally shoves me up against the wall like choking me again so hard i could not breathe like and i don't like to be choked like <laughs> i came out with my story on how he choked me and put his hands on me and was aggressive with me multiple times many other girls have came out and spoke on their sides of the story and their dealings and personal experiences they've had with him and a lot of them are similar to what i have gone through now sid actually made a formal apology like a declaration of independence of some sorts bro like on instagram the other day and I'm just gonna let y'all see it on the screen. I'm gonna summarize it really, really, really quick. Basically, the man said, they're lying on my name. Everybody making these videos. I'm done responding. I basically provided for them. I helped everybody around me out. I did everything out of the kindness of my heart. Don't take everyone's word on the internet as law. And that's basically what he said, man. Overall, I made this video to basically document every important video that's been dropped in the situation so far. I think it's a somewhat similar case to Pretty Boy Fredo, but even worse because physical abuse towards women is being brought into the fold. I do believe 90% of what everyone is saying because though they have different accounts as far as their experiences, everyone's story basically follows the same path. King Sid is a very messed up individual. So messed up to the point that every single person that was around him past or present is linking up and saying the same thing. And in Sid's responses, I just can't believe that he's telling the truth. Again, the purpose of this video was not to tell you not to watch King Sid. If you wanna keep watching him, that's your prerogative. It's just to document this whole entire situation as best as I can. But if you new, make sure you join the Discord to continue this discussion. Like I said, it's in the description. It's Fargo, and I'm out, man.